And we're back, Stripe Show Podcast, coming to you, special one here, over the weekend. I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Thank you for making us part of your day. We've got a great show on this special edition here over the weekend coming your way. Fred Funk will be joining me here momentarily, a longtime student of mine playing in the PGA Tour Champions event here on site in Jacksonville. No Date Big Gay is going to be coming up as well, and potentially Michael Allen, which uh, I'm going to be really excited if we can get Michael Allen in here. I'm uh, located here at Tim Aquana Golf and Country Club. This is the Vistar Credit Union Patriot Outpost right over here to my right, 17th hole, the par three, and it looks like Podrick Harrington has a birdie putt right now from about eight feet, and he made it. Or maybe that was from par. Like, like I think he got it up a dodge. Anyway, it was a nice putt and a nice par. As many of you know, I was actually in Las Vegas uh, earlier in the week and uh, spending some time out there on the PGA Tour. It was the Shriners Children Open. I was really excited to get out there uh, to shoot some content for the Golf Channel. As many of you know, the cut every Tuesday. Make sure you check it out. Got some uh, some good content coming out there. Got to spend some time with who I think is going to be the next top player from the university of Georgia, Michael Thompson, really special player, and, and a guy that is my new favorite golfer on the PGA Tour. His name is Harry Hall, not Harry Hicks, Harry Hall. I love that man, I cannot wait for you to see that next Tuesday. But let's get to where we are here. Fast forward, on the Champions Tour here this week, I'm kicking off um, my partnership with Vistar Credit Union here uh, in the fourth quarter, which I'm really excited about because Vistar does so much uh, for Florida and into Georgia. And uh, one of them, things that they do is with the military and joining me here is the manager of military and specialty projects, Marianne Kaliznik. How'd I do? It's wonderful, it's perfect, <laughs> perfect. Thank you for having me, I'm excited to be here. Absolutely, this, this, is, uh, this, is, this outpost is, is really cool. Yeah. And uh, they've got right. an absolute fantastic spot here on the par three. It's beautiful. Uh, and watching yeah. these players come through. I wanna start here. Um, Vistar does so much for a lot of people in this community. I mean, you've got a lot of things going on. The yeah. one that I know, um, and it, it has a rich history in the military, yep. right? So tell us about we that. We do, we do. So for those who don't know, um, Vistar was founded in 1952 as um, at Air, Naval Air Station Jacksonville, NAS Jax, um, originally chartered as Jax Navy Federal Credit Union um, to create a safe place for military members and service, civil service members and their families to save and borrow money. So even though our uh, field of membership has grown, our commitment to serving the military members and their families really hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So we're really deeply rooted in the military and really proud of that fact. And there's a new initiative, right, coming up. Yes. Um, it's called Hashtag Honor Your Hero. Yep. And when I was talking with Vistar about some of the initiatives that we're gonna be doing together, this one is probably the one that I'm most excited about yes. because of the outreach to, to my followers, to your audience, on how they can honor a hero. Yep, yep. Tell us about it, that. It's really, we're really excited about this. So we're running this campaign, Honor Your Hero, through the month of October. So the community is encouraged to nominate an active duty or um, military veteran in their life um, who is their hero. Yep. So they, all they have to do is go on um, and submit a photo or video and fill out a quick online form for the reason the person is their hero. Um, really, really neat. So excited about it. Winners will be selected um, based on the entries at the end of the month, and all of the information can be found right now on Star social media. So yeah. really excited about this. We really want to see who uh, everyone's hero is. Yeah, and I'm going to be pushing this out all uh, October and into November before they select in November who the winner is it winner or winners? Gonna be? Winners. Oh, winners. Winners. Yes. Okay. Yes. So there's going to be multiple winners. So you're going to be hearing me talking about this. You'll see the link as well um, that you can click on and nominate your hero. I'd really love for you guys to get behind this and nominate your military hero. Now, here are some of the things. You're all generous. I'm just going to say, like, you know, Vistar's very yeah. generous with, <laughs> with, like, what these veterans can win. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to name a few of them. All right. Yeah. Let's so hear it. we've got some upcoming uh, sporting events at the University of Florida. Mm -hmm. Upcoming events at Florida State University. Yep. The Orlando Solar Bears, Savannah Ghost Pirates, and some good stuff. My lessons with me. Yes. 
Yes. Lessons with me, <laughs> folks, whether it's in person or online. And my partner in PXG is PXG full set of clubs. I mean, full amazing. set of Gen Fives, I might add. All 14 clubs, and that's just to kind of kick it off. Those are just a few of the things that they can win. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so amazing. Yeah, so, it really yeah. is. We really want people to submit those, submit those applications. Excited in, about it. In addition to the military, what other stuff do you got going on at Blackstone? Yeah. So, well, to to kind of um, talk about what else we we do in the community that's really military involved, um, we have a lot of community projects going on. Um, we are involved in the National POW MIA, MIA Memorial and Museum, and that's an ongoing project here in Jacksonville for those who aren't familiar. Um, Vicar has really been a strong supporter of that um, to honor the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice um, to their country and who weren't able to come home. So the USS Orlick, I don't know if you've been downtown yet, but it's really, really cool. They, we brought the, um, we were part of bringing the um, ship over here and it, there was a lot of financial challenges. So we kind of stepped in and helped with that. Um, and then there's also the UF um, Health Leon Haley Brain Wellness Program that we are a part of too. So, and then the NAS Jacks um, Air Show as well. So we're we're really integrating the community when it comes to the military. It's got to be satisfying for you when you see the impact you make on these people, and yeah. these veterans, and like just this experience out here yep. um, at the outpost. I'm you know I'm looking at um, the veterans kind of hanging out, eating, and, and really. You know, watching the golf, Mike Weir, actually the lefty Canadian coming through right now, he's actually tied for the lead currently, and, and with Jim Furyk, I believe, who played very well late um, yesterday. So, they kind of cool Furyk. Yeah. Won his own event, or would yes. that just be like? I don't know. I don't know. Can he do that? I mean, I think he. I mean, he's fully capable, but that's not yeah. a very good host. I mean, if you win your own event. <laughs> Let someone else win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marianne, thank you so much. Thank uh, you for having us here. Thank you for everything that you do. And, uh, we Fred appreciate Funk, it. Thank Fred you so Funk much. Will be joining us here momentarily. Stay tuned. All right, joining me here, he's back, Northeast Florida, Jacksonville. Fred Funk, how you doing, bud? I'm good. It's actually good to come back. I was here 31 years, and for whatever reason, I moved out about a couple of years ago, and and uh, moved to Austin. And actually, we're kind of homeless right now. That's a long story <laughs> in itself. We don't even have a house. We took advantage of the market and sold it for. A lot more than we paid for it, and the problem is you sell high, you got to buy high. Yeah. And we didn't want to buy high, so yep. we're renting. Okay. So we're homeless. Yeah. The bridges look good. I've been looking at on, all underneath the bridges and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some of them I mean, look I pretty got, nice. I have a spare There's a lot of room under my, there. In my place in Nocatee, if you guys want to come down there, and, yeah. that wouldn't be bad. We have a seven, that six year old. We're gonna help yeah. Amber and I out, and you can watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Babysitting is not included. No, no babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> so how you feeling? I know you had some, you had the back issue there yeah, earlier in the year. Yeah, yeah, I've had a big battle. Uh, yeah. I, in March, I had uh, my second back surgery, and I had a lot of nerve pain for mm. five years from the first one. Um, L3, 4, and 4, 5, it collapsed on itself, or 4, 5, and 5, S1. It collapsed on itself and just crushed the nerve, and mm. I've been trying to do everything short of a fusion. I actually went to Tiger's doctor in Dallas. Uh, that, Couple uh, early March, and he came to the room. He says, "You know, Fred, your back sucks." After this, after about a day and a half of diagnostic, and and uh, he says, "If I do what I got to do, I'm gonna have to fuse three levels, and you'll never play golf again, mm -hmm. even for fun." I mm -hmm. went, "Well, why would I do that?" And he goes, "Well, you don't have to do it. It's a big surgery." And I said, "I'm not doing that yet." So uh, I found a guy in San Diego, uh, Chol Kim. He's amazing. And what he did, he took the, the nerve that was just being crushed and just opened up the, made room around it so it could breathe mm. and not have that pain. And, and um, I got rid of the nerve pain. About a month and a half later, the nerve pain was gone and life began again. Uh, I was able to sleep. I've been able to mm. practice. I've been able to work out. And, um, and the game is every now and then shows signs that yeah. I can do something. Yeah. But uh, I still struggle with the golf game, unfortunately. But um, you're probably gonna practice as much either. You know, I mean, you're not. Well, I'm, I'm practicing more than I probably should. Okay. I'm, I'm really pushing this. I don't know how long it'll last, yeah. and hopefully it'll last. But um, but I'm playing again, and the biggest reason I'm playing is, you know, I haven't been competitive in four or five years. Uh, but the fraternity we have out here, the brotherhood we yeah. have on the Champions Tour, is fantastic. So I love being out with the guys. Yeah. I hate shooting when I'm shooting uh, a lot. Although I did break my age, their ally a couple weeks ago, and 
Shot 65 and led the tournament by myself the first round. I saw that. Wow. And then I, I fixed that. that up with a 75. <laughs> and actually, see, it's 17 see, everybody, green. Everybody's everybody's like this. Yeah, I know. And then I shot 68 and I, you know, turned around. If I shoot 70 the second round, I would have won the damn thing. Is the juice so, is still burning? Like the competitive, when you get out here, it's like, oh, I really, let's go, let's I really go. want it. Okay. I just, yeah. yeah, let's go, let's go is like, uh, let's, hopefully I can go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, like, uh, my audience knows I've talked about you some in the past. You know, when when you were in Jacksonville, this was what I mean, it was probably ten years ago when I used to work with you a fair sure. amount. Um, and then when Taylor was young in high school, uh, worked with Taylor before he left and went on to college. And now Taylor's on PJ Tour Canada, right? Yeah, he did Canada. He just missed first stage of Corn Ferry, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, that that hurts. Puts him in that dark hole, yeah. that black hole where yeah. you're trying to figure out how to get out of it. So you had. So when we were working together, you were you were winning tournaments at a like one a year on, on the champion. You won nine, I believe. Right? Yeah, 12. yeah, I won nine. nine. I, I, but I did it all early, and, and I played really solid. I yeah. should have won. I put myself in position yeah. to win a lot of them. Actually, I think um, I gave that first U.S. Open away that I mm -hmm. was in contention for, and then I won the next one, and uh, and then I was second two more times mm -hmm. right after that, and that. That was really good. I mean, I was putting myself in contention a lot. Uh, I remember in Sparity when you were standing in the middle of the 18th and <laughs> you were tied with Tom Lehman. Yeah. And you, that second shot on 18 is no joke. No. At Woodlands. All over the water. And yeah. you stuck it to light. Yeah, it was It was just outside where I didn't even have to think about it. I mean, it was really only that long. I, I was a nervous wreck. I was jumping up and down <laughs> in my house when you hit it to that. I'm not yeah. going to lie. And well, Lehman hit it in there 10 feet and missed it. Yeah, he was actually a little close for that, he? and he hit a great putt, and yeah. I still don't know how it didn't go in. Mm -hmm. The funny thing with that shot, my, my son was on the bag, and it was 20 years later after my first win at the same venue. Yep, in PGA Tour. Yep. And uh, in 92. Yep. And uh, that was pretty special. But early in the week, we all know the Sunday pin, and I said, Taylor, when that pin's over there, we're not going for it, okay? We're aiming <laughs> over here. And then we get to the that day, and it was like, you know, basically a playoff at that point. Yeah. It was mano a mano. Yeah. And he says, so where are you taking us? I said, right at it. He said, Dad, you said you don't go. Well, we got to go for it now. And I was hitting a five iron in there. That was, oh, was, you know, a, was a lot of clubs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a hell of a shot. Was. That was one of the best I've hit coming down the stretch. Yeah, for that sure. was cool. And I think then you, then you end up losing in the playoff like two years later, your good friend Goodis, didn't you? Were you in that where? playoff with Mike when Goodis won there? Or did he no, lose he didn't playoff? win. He lost that. Playoff. Oh, he was in the playoff and yeah. lost. That's right. Right, right. He was that's with right. uh, Esteban, I think. Esteban Toledo. That's right. I think there was one other one too. But yeah, Mike's my, my best buddy. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So actually, Mike was with me with Layman that day. Yeah, he's play, he played yeah, well. He played lot. really yeah, good. He played. Yeah. He's always played good yeah. on that golf he course. Does. I think he won a Rock Barn yeah. that year too. Yeah, he's one of the he's one of the best ball strikers. Uh, well, best drivers, Driver. I would say. Driver. One of the best right. drivers. Yeah. Ever. Paints yeah. like just perfect. That's dead, dead straight every time and long. Yeah. For a little dude. So when we were working together like i was a coach by creator i told you earlier i was like look Fred, I don't, one thing i don't do is caddy ever i don't want to caddy yeah. remember you made me yeah. caddy like two or three times remember that <laughs> yeah, over the years i do and you were a good caddy though no i was not yeah you were i was not a good caddy the bag looks small on you yeah I, rem <laughs> I, I remember and i remember when you got into the pnc and you played with taylor father son and you oh go, we did yeah that was fun and and you go up oh, you were we were sitting we were working in the bay and you go yeah. i just got in the pnc with taylor Shoot, I have everybody caddy. He's like, you're caddying. I'm like, <laughs> now tell me it was fun. No, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> it was but do you remember what happened on the first hole of the practice round? So we had your clubs in the bay and we left your seven iron in the bay. Oh. And you had another set in your car. And so we get on the practice round and I've got the, you know, you go, Here, mm -hmm. you go, here's my bag. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm like just trying to get, stay the hell out of the way. And we get out to the, we get out to your drive on one. And you know, you know what club you asked for? Seven iron. And I didn't have it. You didn't have and it. And you're like, you're right. You are a shitty guy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I told you I, I didn't want to be out story, here. I forgot that story, but I was yeah. like, I told you I didn't want to be out here. That's funny. All right, let me ask you about Liv. How long does it take when you come up to some? If you walk through this crowd right now out here, how long would it take for them to ask you about Liv? What question? Is it the first, the second, or the third? It's it's early. It's early. It's, it's a lot of times it's the first. You know, sometimes, well, after they say hi. Yeah, right, right. Hey, Fred, what, so, do you think? Yeah, what do you think of the lift? Give well, me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts. What do you think? I'm on both sides of the fence on that because if I was in a situation like 
Westwood, Poulter, Nicholson. Right. That point of their career. So they got a they got a choice of playing a regular tour, champions tour, get their butt speed on a champ on a regular tour, come to the champions tour, we're not playing for any kind of money really, comparatively. Right. And then they offer you a hundred million dollars or fifty million, whatever it is, two hundred million for Phil. Uh, I'm out of here. Yeah. And I would have gone. But for the young guy, Taylor Gooch was one of the first young guys to go, and he was rocking and rolling on the, on the regular tour. And uh, and then Cameron Smith, when he went, I was yep. like, wow, you know. I, it, but it's hard to turn down that kind of money. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they're they're not playing for anything. It's exhibition golf. Yeah. And it's 48 guys right now, and it's team golf, and it, there's and there's excessive amount of money out there even on the weekly purses. How do you keep the competitive juices going, though? I got, that's the, the yeah. I don't know how. I mean, it's it's almost just shit and giggles out yeah. there, you know. Really I mean, for for the what they're doing, and they're an asking exhibition. for world world ranking points, and they one, can't get that. I mean, think, it, no. it, it, not so. not at 48 guys and. And uh, three rounds, I just can't see them getting it. If they get it, it's a farce, I think. But at the same time, I don't. Uh, all right, let me back up. Okay. So, so what has to hold true is what Monahan laid the ironic line in the sand, and being the Saudis, yeah, and just said, okay, you go over there, you're not coming back. Right. And if any of those guys are allowed, whether it's a court decision or anything. And they're allowed to come back and play the regular tour. Now, Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, and Morikawa, and all those guys are going to go, wait a minute. We're, out, we're all going. Now we're going. Yeah. Now we're all going. So uh, that can't happen. That'll destroy the tour. Yeah. It'll totally destroy the tour. Yeah. Uh, and that's what Greg Norman wants, I think. Uh, I think he wants to, you know, he says it's you know, for betterment of the game and all this other stuff. He, he wanted to get the tour back in the 90s. So now he has the money to back it up. The other thing is the other side of that, where they're going to play. I think if they're eligible for whatever makes them eligible to be in the Masters, the U.S. Open, British PGA, yeah, yeah. they should play until their either world ranking drops or right. their eligibility's up. So I don't have a problem playing in it. You know, it, it's for their better interest to have the strongest field they can have. The, the, majors. the majors, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and to hold them out for whatever reason yeah. and kind of align with. With um, with the tour and Monahan on that, then I would say I don't think they need to. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I'm a little upset about with the tour, and I'll be out front with it. I, I was upset that we pulled out of anything to do, and the RNA followed it. Anything to do with Trump's name on it, they pulled out. Turnberry is probably one of the best, if not the best, golf course in every, maybe anywhere, mm -hmm. and definitely the best of the Rota. Yeah. And um, he, Trump owns it. They'll never play there again. Um, they pulled out of Doral, went to Mexico, slap in the face. Um, you know, I, it's whether I'm a Trump guy or you're a Trump guy or not. That's just not right. The guy puts a lot of money in the golf. He loves the game, and and you know, unfortunately, we have. Uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. You guys have I'll in the locker room. That. I mean, these guys in the locker room. I mean, you're you're, you're good buddies. You've been traveling the country and the world with for. 30, 40 years, right, playing professional golf. Guys that have meant so much to the PGA Tour, including yourself. Like, do you guys just kind of sit around and be like, what the hell is going on? I mean, this is this is crazy that the PGA Tour is in the position that it's in. Because like you said, if it comes down from a ruling that that these guys can come back, I mean, it's, it feels it's, like... It's over, I like, think. It's it, that close, isn't it's it? It's over. It's yeah, that and, and, We're that close. Yeah. It really is. And I, you guys I, gotta be sitting there thinking, this is kind of sad. Well, it is. It is. And the, and the other part of it was before, just before all this was going on, the last three or four or five, eight years, ten years, but these young guys are awesome. Yeah. And our tour was in the strongest position it yeah. probably ever has been in. The most popular. The, the they were rocking and rolling. Um, you know, the irony. Remember the Canadian Open this year was opposite the first one in London. You remember how rock and roll, I mean, Rory and yep. all those guys, Justin Thomas, they were putting on a display of yep. shot making, yep. and unbelievable. And that was phenomenal to watch. And I would hate to lose that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just think there's, there's a tradition, I think, among 
whether you believe it, there's more than just the tradition of the U.S. of the majors and the players. Yeah. That you know when you're you're playing to Byron Nelson for however many years they've been playing certain tournaments we've been playing the same venue for years and years and years. It may not mean a lot to a lot of guys on the outside, but to me it means a lot to be a part of that tournament. Sure. Um, with the icons that represent it, yeah. so it's yeah. really really cool. Yeah. So yeah, I hope I, we don't lose that. Yeah, it's it's, it's, uh, it's going to be. I understand the guys going because how you turn down the money. Yeah. And then I don't know the response with the regular tour. Uh, was it, it seemed like we were reacting instead of just yeah. you know getting ready for it and right. and right. having something out there and say okay yeah. you know we were always reacting to what they did and now we got a two tier tour. I know we got the haves and the have we got the haves that have a lot and we have the not the have nots, but they don't have as much. Right. Right. <laughs> so right. it's and and it's a self perpetuating tour with the world ranking points and all the money, um, and such a diversity between twenty million dollar purses and ten million dollar yeah, purses. Sure. And so it, it's going to be interesting the next two to three years where this thing goes. Yeah, it is. It's going to be fascinating. All right, let's finish up with this. You got a big project. You designed a course out in Colorado, and it's come to fruition, right? Yep. Tell me. Tell us about yep. it. Yeah, it's uh, called Rain Dance, and uh, it, Rain Dance, I love um, that. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Actually, you need <laughs> after being out there and designing it, and we've been sitting on it since 2009, yeah. and uh, finally broke ground two summers ago. But uh, it's a very high altitude, desert, arid climate. Mm -hmm. it doesn't get much rain and snow. It gets it gets some snow, and they, they love it when they get the snow. Mm -hmm. But uh, the piece of land is gorgeous has these huge arroyos on it the erosion ditches and we just went around and over them and uh, tried not to touch anything that nature created and just put a golf course in there and it so where do you fly into fly into Denver it's an hour north, uh, hour north. just south of Fort Collins uh, just east of the Rockies our first hole overlooks aims right at Long Speak 14,000 footer and uh, most of the year it has snow on it it's really really pretty yeah we've had some uh, it's the second longest course in the world 8,460 yards. It plays probably about 77. And uh, we had it at 8,000. It was going to play way too short if we ever had a tour event. <laughs> uh, it was going to play about 7,000 at most. So, because uh, we got a, there's 250 yeah. foot drop. We put fescue in it. It's at 5,000 feet. The ball just runs like crazy. So we started, so he wanted to chase a record, have the shortest pro to ever play the PGA Tour. Height, distance, wherever shortness is yeah. recorded in my body, <laughs> and <laughs> and have the have me design the longest, second longest. We were trying to be the longest, but the longest is in Shanghai, China, and that's at that? ten thousand five hundred feet, and it's eighty five hundred yards. <laughs> we couldn't get another eighty five fifty, I think, and we're uh, eighty four sixty, ninety yard short. Course. Yeah, it's at ten thousand. I never heard of a golf course at ten thousand feet. My goodness. But, uh, Are you kidding me? Are, what, are you like landing it on an airport strip? Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what you, a glacier. I mean, <laughs> you'd have to be. <laughs> be. I mean, can you imagine that Probably place your season's being, two months. Can you imagine that place being wet, no carry, oh, or geez. no roll? Yeah, no roll. <laughs> driver, 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 <laughs> three wood wedge. Well, we had Sam Saunders who lives out there, yeah. and he played it all the way back, oh. every hole, all the way back, which will never happen if we had a tournament, because if the wind came up. And he shot uh, par 72. Five par fives, five par three, shot 67. Five par five, five par three. Yeah. Cool. And uh, and then uh, he went out another time and shot 68. So it can be done. Oh, I can't play from the back. I can't fly yeah. the force carries that we have on, on about four holes. So <laughs> that's, that's great. You could, but I don't know about that. But I can't. I'm just trying to remember the seven iron. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the only guy that hits it shorter in altitude. So. so what do you think? So, last question. Into the you got a few more years left. Maybe that body holds up. One more win in you? You think? Is there one uh, more? I would love to think so, but uh, I, I thought that at Ally, I, yeah. I, I really, for whatever reason, I stumbled onto something on the practice day, and all of a sudden I had my height back, I had my contact back, I was had a draw back, yeah. wow. and and it was there, and then it gone again but I had it for that whole week the next week it was gone I went what the hell did I do different <laughs> but I found something and uh, it, it, I was, it's funny I was actually I was trying to feel like 
I was stacking and tilting, mm -hmm. even though I'm not a stack and tilter. That's what we but used I, to work on. For, yeah, I try to get yeah. left and try to create yeah. a little more space, yeah. and I keep gravitating back this way, yeah. and then and that's where I'm stuck now. I'm all, I can't find it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I go this way, I can't find it. I go this way, I can't find it. I can't get in the middle. And <laughs> well, it's somewhere in there. It, it is somewhere just, in there. I just can't. Just keep when, I, <laughs> when I get it, it's there. Yeah. I'll hit shots, and I go, wow, that's it. Yeah. Like today, I, I hit, probably hit about four unbelievably beautiful shots, and I went, "There it is!" When I was struggling all yeah. day, and I, I made two stupid doubles, no, no birdie. I shoot four over with two doubles, and uh, just mm. busy. well, stay that's with something it. you told me never to do. What? Make doubles. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> I, said I said make no doubles. But it's funny or you triple. say that. Like we used to, you. That's kind of been your dick. You were because I remember you came back from your knee and your thumb. Yeah, and you were kind of drifting off of it, and I, and I said, no, you got to lean more left. And you looked at me like, I don't do that. Like I don't want to. I don't want to be stacking. I was like, no, 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 that's not stacking. That's just you're too much over here. You got to feel like you're going here. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, I and, do now. And, and, and yeah. then I would get you to do that and exaggerate, and then I'd show you on video and be like, yeah, that looks normal. It looks good. Yeah, you and actually like the club would get. Longer and longer, longer and longer, longer back here. And I remember and right now, I'm right here. I'm like, and there was a stretch. I think it was that same year. I think you finished second in the um, Schwab to Fernhardt that year in Arizona. You were right there. Yes, yes. And you were. Yeah, that was yeah. the longest I've ever seen you hit the ball. That stretch. Really? You were. Remember the driver? You were like, I mean, literally just yeah. opening up and leaning and opening your spine up, and that club was parallel, hmm. and you were just ripping it. I bet you, I don't know, but I bet you're over here. Oh, I guarantee you I yeah, am. Yeah. Taylor actually was telling me, yeah. you're, you're over here, you gotta get back over here. Yeah. So I've been well, trying to get here and I went the wrong way. You gotta set up a little there and then feel like when you turn, you kind of go this way. That's what it feels like. I didn't do that. Okay. I wouldn't So, so I wouldn't, lean, lean right and then go left so as I you would, go back. I wouldn't set up over here. Okay. No, no, I wouldn't do that. I'd set up a little bit. That's what I was doing in Michigan though. Because when I set up left, I don't know how we diversed into this lesson, but but we, it felt like I was trying to my practice swings. The yeah. club was going out, yeah, out and and, up. It, and and up, yeah. yeah, and in the real swing, it was just I had more space. Yeah, right, I had right. more yeah, a lot yeah. more space yeah. to work coming down. Yeah, because if you go this way, it kind of it wraps around you, and then you don't have that angle, right? And you're kind of like it's shallow. Almost. Yep. You know, where if you, I would, so I'd have a, just a subtle side bend at a dress and then feel like it's working up behind you with the spine feeling. I never got that spine thing. Feeling a bit low. Very well, yeah. I've never seen you overcome that. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, it feels like you are, but you're not, not even. Not, not, not. Yeah. I've never seen that out of you. I mean, no, yeah. there's guys that will. There's guys that do it. Yeah. I mean, they're, they start there, I mean, they're over there. Yeah. Not as much anymore. Remember right. that little. Yeah, they that, got it. Yeah, 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 they, they, they got it. Yeah, yeah, they're out of it. Hi, right, Fred. Thank That's you, it. Appreciate All right, it. Yeah. you got it. Yeah, All that right, was thanks. awesome. All right, here with No Day Begay, the third, first tournament on PGA Tour Champions. How's the body holding up? Um, not as good as I would like, but uh, you never can quite completely prepare for the uh, competitive yeah. grind. I mean, it's uh, a lot of walking, a lot of intensity, a lot of adrenaline. So you just, you know, you really come out here, do your best, try and get a feel for it. I play again next week. Got another round tomorrow. So. Just trying to see some incremental improvement day to day and um, getting a good spot where I feel like I can shoot a good score. When you made the decision, I'm coming back to play on the Champions Tour, and you go to that point to where you're now right now, what's been the what's been the hardest piece of the puzzle to kind of re rekindle a little bit? Well, just getting enough competitive repetitions, playing in enough tournaments. I think the guys that have made the transition very quickly, Steve Stricker. Uh, Kirk Triplett did a great job when he first came out. They stayed very competitive on the PJ Tour and the Corn Ferry Tour. So I didn't have that luxury. I only had a couple tournaments prior to coming in here, which is why I, you know, I'm not playing terrible, but not playing great. Yeah, not sure. I mean, it's just like you got to work the rust off a little right, bit. Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of rust. A lot of rust. Because you didn't like you hadn't played professionally. What what was the gap? From Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. So and that's ten not a fair years. comparison to like Stricker and those <laughs> and Fury. I mean, these guys are playing competitively right up to the right. Well, I had an injury. I played for a while, then went into broadcast television yeah. and um, just did did really to play a lot of competitive golf. Yeah, yeah. And well, you're now, out, you're now it's tour. here. Yeah, yeah, now it's here, and I'm trying to work out the kinks. And it's uh, it's just as hard as I remember. The nerves. 
Was there at first? Oh, a lot of nerves. There? Yeah, there's okay. a lot of nerves, and that's part of it. That's yeah. part of tournament golf, and you just um, get used to them. They never go away, but you just got to learn how to be okay with it. So I got to ask, I mean, I know you've been asked this question. I can't even imagine how many times I get it asked. I could walk over there right now, and it would be either the first or the second question. I mean, where, where are we going next year with pro, with professional golf? I mean, is this is this here to stay? Two, three year run, five years? I mean, what's gonna happen here in the future? You have any idea? Um, Live golf, PGA Tour? Yeah, I think a lot's gonna be determined by the courts. And what you're gonna see is, you know, Liv's gonna continue to try and establish itself as a competitive, uh, a bona fide competitive uh, environment within the professional golf space. Yeah. Um, if they do that and they are able to get world ranking points, then um, it becomes another yeah. entity um, as far as how it works itself out right. in, in, in the grand scheme of things. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just as curious as everybody <laughs> else to see what's going to happen. But it's, it, um, it's weird to think that it is in the court, right? And, that, and I had Fred Funk here earlier and we were talking and he said, he says, look, if, if these guys can come back and play, then the PGA Tour is really in a tough spot because now you're gonna have more guys going and then it just becomes really filtered out, doesn't it, if that's the case? Well, I just, I think it's gonna force, you know, the PGA Tour to establish um, more sort of coherent policies that are similar to that of the NBA, NBA yeah. the NFL. You know, those athletes can't go play in another league. Um, it's just plain and simple. You don't see NBA basketball players going over to the European leagues or the leagues in, in Asia um, because it's just not part of the, the CBA that right. they have, right. the league has with the, with the players. Yep. So wh whatever that sort of technical term as far as relationship that the tour is going to establish with its players, that'll determine um, sort of what those thresholds are. Last question. What's your, it's someone, I meant to ask this earlier. Your distance, you're, you got some competitive rounds going right now. What's your driver distance right now versus when the last time you played on the PGA Tour? Probably about the same. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little shorter. I mean, it's uh, pretty close, right? It's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. It's just the equipment and the ball yeah. is just so much different now yeah. that it's a. Uh, Putter, which, what putting, what's, what's going on there? What are you doing right now? Uh, I got a, I've got a Scotty Cameron bullseye putter, which I put left and right-handed. Right, so. so you're still doing that? Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. So left yeah. to right, left. Left right to right, left, left, right to left, right. So it's pretty easy. You just got to get a double-sided putter. No, no, thank you. Okay, Appreciate my pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Very much. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. There's no one else doing that, right? No. I, I, I was I was gonna get out here and watch you warm up, and I wasn't sure I wanted to come on and watch to see if you were still doing that. But that's never changed. That's the way it's been for years and years and years and years. Fantastic. All right, you want any?